Hi everyone, it's Jo and this is video two in my natural mental health series. Today's video is going to be talking about fish oil. Now fish oil you'll probably think is just all about cardiac health and yes it does help lower triglycerides and move that plaque around, increase blood flow and improve heart function. But you probably don't know about how many mental health benefits it also can produce. So that's what I want to talk to you about in this short video today. So let's get into this one, fish oil and mental health. So fish oil is a common term used to refer to two, two kinds of omega-3 fatty acids. So we're not going to get into all the technical names, we're going to call these EPA and DHA. And these omega-3 fats are usually found in fish, also in some animal products and phytoplankton. So when we're talking about omega-3s, um, they are a type of polyunsaturated fatty acids. There's also omega-6 fatty acids, but we are talking about omega-3 fatty acids. Um, and they are the alpha linolenic acids, the ALA, and the EPA and the DHA that I've mentioned. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about this without getting too technical because it is an important part of ensuring you get the right balance of fish oil and omega-3s. So the fatty acids, EPA and DHA, they're involved in regulating various biological processes such as the inflammatory response, uh, also various metabolic signaling pathways and brain function. Uh, so they, they are synthesized in the body from the ALA, but in small amounts for most people. So ALA can be converted into these two acids that we really need. So when we're talking about fish oils and that particular omega-3 that we get from the fish source, the ALA is converted into EPA and then to DHA. But this conversion, which occurs primarily in the liver, is very limited, very small, sometimes only around 15%. That means uh, consuming EPA and DHA directly from foods and or dietary supplements is the only practical way to increase levels of these fatty acids in the body. But making sure you don't have too much of these particular acids is important too. So unlike some other vitamins like vitamin C, where you can have a high dose, there's not going to be any toxicity. Vitamin A, fish oils, these particular um, acids, they can cause toxicity. So we'll talk about dosage soon. So making sure you don't have too much fish oil is important and making sure that you haven't got any contraindications, which I'll also talk to you about. So pregnant women and children, we need to modify the dose for them. Also be careful with fish because if you're trying to increase your fish consumption to get the right amount of fish oil, there is mercury in different um, fish species, well in all fish species, but in different quantities. And mercury is a neurotoxin, a poison. So this is where we need to be very careful with children and pregnant women. They should be particularly cautious with their consumption of mercury containing foods. Now, should you be worried about mercury? Well, according to the Heart Foundation, the health benefits of eating fish far outweigh any risks. Um, however, while you should aim to eat two or more fish meals a week, it's wise probably to avoid or limit your intake of varieties that are known to be really high in mercury. So some of those um, shark, um, also called flake, catfish, swordfish, marlin, um, I think it's orange ruffy. Um, not real good with my fish species, but I think that's a deep sea perch. Um, gemfish, ling, southern blue, fin tuna, all of these tend to have a much higher mercury content. So if you are pregnant or if you're considering fish oil supplements for children, be very careful there. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk to you about are the types of foods that contain um, fish oil. So obviously we've just spoken about fish. So a good uh, type of fish for, for the um, omega-3s I've been talking about, DHA and EPA, mackerel, oysters, prawns, salmon, uh, sea bass, sardines, trout, and some other non-ocean animal foods also have these uh, acids, so lamb and eggs. But if you don't eat meat or fish, then other plant-based foods might include some of this too, although they tend to be more high in the ALA. Remember that that has to convert to the EPA and the DHA in the body. So you can add some seaweed 
Smaldi. Does that sound yummy? <laughs> if that's still close to the ocean for you, then you might try some chia seeds, hemp seeds, flax seeds. Put them in a smoothie. They're very high in ALA, so you'll get a bit of that conversion. Kidney beans, um, edamame, soybean oil, and walnuts. There's some examples. But remember, the problem is most people do not eat enough of these foods to reach their recommended daily intake of fish oil and, and the acids, the DHA and the EPA. So this is where supplementation is needed. Now, how much is too much? So there are no conclusive recommendations, really. The, the recommended daily intake for an adult is between 250 and 500 milligrams per day of that combined EPA and DHA, of which, of which fish oil is an excellent source, and that's enough for most healthy people. Keep in mind, though, that this will vary depending on your needs, and remembering pregnant women, infants and children may require different dosages. I'm going to put up on the screen now some recommended amount of the ALA. Um, and there you go there, you can have a look there and see that um, birth to 12 months, very low, up to women 1.1 grams, men 1.6 grams. This is your ALA. And as a guide, children um, aged between two and three years ideally need at least 40 milligrams a day, rising to about 55 milligrams by the time they're four or eight teenagers, increasing now to 70. To, um, 70 to about 125 milligrams a day is optimal. Now, you can achieve this by eating two to three serves of oily fish every week and supplementing your intake with fish oil supplements. So now let's talk about the benefits. Now, this is the bit that I find really interesting as a clinical psychologist and always advocating for natural um, alternatives to synthetic chemicals. Here's some interesting things you may not know about fish oil. So fish oil, we do know it causes a, or is linked to a reduction in triglyceride levels. So this is adding to blood flow in the heart and a decrease in the growth of plaques, preventing a buildup of cholesterol in the arteries. So we know that fish oil is good for arteries and for joints and all of that. Um, and it can also result in a blood pressure decrease, a, a declining um, blood pressure for hypertensives, but it appears to notably improve mood as well for people with major depression. You know, it's actually unclear if the results are as significant for people with minor depression. We actually know that it helps more with, with severe depression. EPA in particular seems to be the most effective omega-3 fatty acid for this purpose, which suggests that the effects of fish oil are due to reducing neuroinflammation. So its anti-inflammatory benefits also seem to extend to reducing the symptoms of some other conditions, um, systemic lupus, for example. But these anti-inflammatory uh, responses don't extend to all anti-inflammatory diseases. So check with your naturopath or your dietitian, your allied health professional, someone who understands a little bit um, about these particular processes. Interestingly, there is research showing that people with OCD and ADHD, so kids as well, have lower levels of EPA and DHA in their bodies. So this suggests that there's a link between a deficiency of these omega-3 acids and these particular mental health conditions. So if you've got a child or if you yourself have ADHD or OCD, try a small fish oil supplement to help reduce the anxiety and that impulse control problem that's often associated with these conditions. Another interesting fact related to mental health is in the area of psychosis, believe it or not. Researchers have now found that the long chain omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids can reduce symptoms of early psychosis in young people. And this is where we see uh, an emerging area of psychosis in that young adolescent period. So we now know, uh, and this is published research in um, the journal, I think it was of biological psychiatry, they examined the blood levels of omega-3s in young people at ultra high risk for psychosis at baseline at six months and at 12 months. And the findings were very clear. People who had the higher blood levels of omega-3 fatty acids 
had fewer psychiatric symptoms and better functioning than those with the lower levels. So fish oil, uh, beneficial for heart health, uh, but also for neurocognition, for depression, for anxiety, for impulse control disorders, ADHD, OCD, and psychosis. Really a powerful supplement for mental health. Uh, a super important combination of acids that apparently um, as much as 80% of Australians are not consuming enough of. 80%. Uh, so if you're not getting enough uh, of these acids and you're experiencing any of those mental health conditions, speak to someone and get that right dosage. Keep it in mind that there are some side effects and drawbacks, which I'll bring your attention to now. So many fish oil supplements may contain some harmful lipid peroxide. So these are the oxidized lipids that can cause damage to cells. But it's technically, it's a blurry area. It's, it's pretty unclear whether these have notable consequences to your health, but it's something to be mindful of. Also, certain types of omega-3 fatty acids are high in vitamin A, which can be toxic if consumed in large amounts, particularly with children. So vitamin A, you can have too much of that. And too much fish oil has also been shown to increase mental health symptoms. So this is that paradoxical side effect, making depression and anxiety worse. So more is not better in the case of fish oil. It's getting that right dosage uh, where you're going to get optimal health benefits. And aside from vitamin A toxicity, other side effects of too much fish oil can include high blood pressure, um, bleeding, bleeding gums and nosebleeds are two of the hallmark signs um, or side effects of too much fish oil consumption. Uh, too low a blood pressure, so hypotension, this is where fish oil's capacity to lower blood pressure is well documented and co can cause some problems if your blood pressure is already low. Uh, diarrhea, acid reflux, even stroke. So these findings are also consistent with other research showing that fish oil could inhibit the blood clot formation. So when you have that hemorrhaging kind of stroke as opposed to an ischemic event, which is where you've got a blockage, um, that, that can be a, an implication or a risk factor of too much fish oil. And insomnia, which is something um, no one likes. Sleep is a really important and critical part of mental health too. So I hope that that's been helpful. Fish oil is not just for heart health. It is implicated in a bunch of mental health conditions which I've reviewed. So if you have any questions about fish oil, uh, you can write to me, energymedicine777 at gmail.com or you can write your question below and I'm more than happy to answer it. I, I will be providing a whole bunch of videos in this series, but let's consider natural supplementation in mental health. There are many different supplements and things that you can source naturally in food that can help improve your mental health. You just may not know about it. So stay tuned. I will be doing more videos, hopefully one a week until I've got them all covered. Uh, but so far, my video one was magnesium. Today, we've looked at fish oil, those omega-3s, and I hopefully will do iodine in the next video, but we'll get there with a lot to cover. All right, until then, take care of yourselves and each other and have a very happy, peace-filled day. Bye now.